Hello guys, welcome to the new episode of Power BI, the new super villain. Uh, by super villain, I do not mean uh, a super, real super villain. I mean a smart, logical guy, dependable guy, and gets rid of traditional BI techniques using Excel dashboards. With me, I have Anup Kumar. Uh, Anup is a highly passionate BI professional with over 11, 11 years of experience uh, of managing BI and data warehousing. He's got wide variety of roles, right from being a data mart analyst at Infosys to BI business analyst at Barcard Munich, the product owner, and next next month onward, I think he's going to be head of department for the newly uh, formed team data services division. Uh, Anup has has been a thought leader in this space. He's creator of reports, reportpedia.com, jobbi.com, uh, public BI, uh, public data warehouse. Uh, he's a founder director for Reportpedia Private Limited. Surprisingly, uh, I mean, Anup, I think you must be among the first few professionals who entered this domain when the BI term was coined, isn't it? Right. So, firstly, I would like to uh, thank you for your initiative and your time and effort, as I was mentioning. It's great that you're trying uh, from your side to create awareness about uh, technology, especially uh, related to the business intelligence. All right. And, and uh, one more, one more update. Yeah. So recently, I mean, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a new follower, and we have been trying to schedule this podcast call since some time. <laughs> Anup secured second place in the European Commission uh, in EU Datathon Public Procurement Challenge, right? And I'm sure Anup will take us through uh, his experience uh, in that project, uh, in that competition. Yeah, sure. So just to come back to the first part of it, um, in terms of uh, business intelligence, I think this term came into its current form, uh, maybe in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. And I started from 2006 when the market was getting hot. So it was already, uh, people were already into this mode of BI, BI, and so on. So this is when I got in around 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, I've uh, always been on BI, mm -hmm. and uh, was, I'm still passionate about BI. And just like to add that, uh, being for over 12 years now, I've learned quite a lot, uh, but there is so much more to learn. Uh, I think this is how it is going to be because of the the way things change every single day there's new tools new technologies coming up in the bi space mm -hmm. and i think this is going to be like this forever right so anup uh, can you share some details about your favorite bi project which you've worked on and you think business has gained tremendously from that right so uh, in, in general, it will be like very difficult to pick one project. Uh, I've done over 15 plus projects by now, uh, and every project has given like unique opportunity, unique challenges. Uh, it's an opportunity to work with people, um, learn things, learn new technologies, solve uh, business problems, add value to business, and so on. Um, for this session, as a quick example, what I can give you is one of the reports that I did for a fleet management company in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, this this report uh, brought out a revenue leakage of, it, it showcased that there was a revenue leakage of 25,000 pounds every single month wow. for the last six months. Mm -hmm. So this was, this came out of a report. And now the main thing to note here is I created the report, but to create this report, uh, then there is a data warehouse in the program, and there's some echo now. Mm -hmm. That's our echo now? Yeah, now, uh, now it's fine. Okay. Yeah, so main thing to note is even though I created the report, the report was created on top of a data warehouse, and this data warehouse was built over a period of five, six years by a big team. And the point I'm trying to say there is uh, we need to have the right foundations to get the right results. So this is one of the quick examples that I can share, and that, that's one of my uh, favorite projects in the past. Of course, the current project is always the uh, most favorite. So in the past, I would say this uh, fleet management company project. Mm. Uh, can you take us to the problem statement uh, and how you solve for the EU Datathon competition? 
Ja, sure. Uh, so I should share my screen. Yeah, sure, sure. One second. So I have two uh, presentations. Let me go with the one which I used in the session last week at Luxembourg. So let me quickly take you through some of this. So this is just a brief about myself and about the company. So we'll skip all this. We'll skip this part as well as to what BI is and so on. So this will take a couple of minutes. Basically, as part of EU data, then what we wanted to do was to build a BI solution uh, for the benefit of the public so that they could um, uncover hidden trends, patterns, correlations, anomalies in EU public procurement. So this was the idea. And this really started from scratch. So there was absolutely nothing. And then faced a lot of challenges. I won't go into the details of this. And we built data models to back it up. And then this is an, a simplified version of the data model. It's very important to have this data model because this is how the, um, it, it's like a plan to build a house. Uh, so based on that, you, you do a lot of corrections and editing and so on. And then you get to know the relationship between different uh, data entities. And then we, what we built is this solution. So basically data from the EU open data portal is picked up, it's downloaded, pre-processed, uploaded into cloud storage, and then data from various data sources is taken. And uh, it's loaded into an ELB storage, then it's uh, combined. It's not summarized, it's just one on top of the other, but it's not summarized. Then it's uh, cleansed and then it's loaded for uh, fermentation in a specific way. Mm -hmm. And uh, dashboards that have been created, which public can use for free. So both citizens and businesses can make use of it. A lot of uh, processes were involved in it, data collection, profiling, modeling, preparation, data log loading, and data analysis using various techniques. So in terms of data, again, I'll skip all this part. Let's go to the, a lot of cleaning techniques were done. Uh, who are the potential users? Let's go to the users. So this is the list of uh, users, let's say the most important users. Yeah. yeah. So I was asking how important it is to understand the who's your potential user for your BI dashboard or the output of your project. Uh, in the business, it's very important, mm -hmm. um, and th this one I'm doing out of passion to create a BI solution for the public. So I have been creating BI solutions in the past and even now for businesses, for enterprises, organizations, and now I thought, okay, I can use this uh, experience to build something for the general public. No, no, so I, I, my, my question was how important it is to, un who, was to understand who's your audience for your BI dashboard. I mean, does it change if you have, say, senior management firm to middle management? Does the does the output or does the design change? Mm, yes, it's it's very important. Uh, who is the user and how they're going to use it and uh, what they're going to do with that. So this is very important. Some some of the users would like to actually uh, have an interface where they can go to more detail when they are. Uh, let's say uh, oriented towards data analysis and so on. Mm -hmm. Even if that's not their core skill, but they would like to do that, then they would need a UI, for example, where they can. On the other side, there are uh, managers uh, who would say, I just need a report, a nice charts, email to me every Monday or so on. So I, I don't want to do anything with the tool. I just want to get this on a timely basis so I can have a quick look at it. Understood. So it's, yeah, it's very important to know uh, the users. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. Yeah. So let me. A um, lot of findings are there based on the uh, solution that we have done. I will quickly show you the solution that is there, and everybody can use this as of now. It's in publicbi.com slash uproc. So this is the solution of. Um, let's say, let me put it this way that this is not the end. This is just to showcase the possibilities with what has been created in the back end. Mm -hmm. With the data that is sitting in the back end, you can do all sort of things. Uh, 
create various other types of uh, charts and so on. Here, um, two sets of uh, dashboards were created for the EU data plan, one for contract awards and uh, one for contract notices. So this is related to procurement. So when somebody wants to procure something, they create a contract notice and once it's been awarded to a supplier, uh, a contract award is created. So this is why the separation is that and the relationship between the contract notices and the contract awards are, are very complex. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Yeah. So as you can see, it's, it's so easy now to uh, filter things. For example, let's say opportunity finder for a person, let's say uh, somebody wants to become a supplier to the European Union public uh, procurement uh, buyers, uh, buyers in, in European Union. The easiest thing you can do is we can go to this chart mm -hmm. and let's say I've done some analysis and based on that I've come to a conclusion. For example, go to um, Portugal, select Portugal. And then immediately you can see that with this chart, what you can see is there are number of buyers are 83, but number of suppliers are 11, almost one is to one ratio, which means the number of suppliers is not so high, and there is a potential that you could become a supplier on one side. Mm -hmm. So this is a bit, and, and the bigger the circle, the more money is involved there. So in, in this way, it's very easy to find out a lot of things. And uh, let me go back to the first page. Which BI tool did you use? I could see Google Data Studio. So that's for more on Correct. more for visualization, right? Correct. So this is the uh, visualization tool that I use. So basically, as the front end, I've used Google Data Studio. And how do you so uh, how do you do data manipulation? I mean, what what tools did you use for data cleaning, data manipulation? Mainly, I'm using Google BigQuery. Okay. For, and I want to use uh, Python uh, for some of the uh, cleansing part, but it's mostly using uh, SQL and uh, Google the query. Okay. And Google Data Studio will fetch the data whenever, I mean, run the query itself when, when you say click on a particular area, particular yeah, country. So every time you click on a page it's uh, bringing the data and if you change the filter so all of these are filters you can do it by year you can do it by buyer country and supplier country so a lot of analysis can be done a lot of interesting things that um, probably has not been seen in the past can be seen now for example this chart mm -hmm. uh, gives immediately an idea that uh, countries like spain uh, Finland and Portugal, mm. uh, when they procure, they also procure not only within the country but also outside the country. Mm. Whereas uh, countries like Romania and Lithuania, they just buy within the country. So this is so easy to get from a visualization like this. Mm -hmm. And this is talking about uh, data from 2006 to 2017. So. 11 years of data is already loaded mm. and as and when we have 2018 data this will also be loaded does this does this auto auto refresh by when new data comes in or uh, any changes yeah this needs to be uh, scheduled it needs to be set up yeah. but uh, right now it's a yearly file so it only we have to update it once a year mm -hmm. there are uh, I think in the uh, what I didn't show you is there are a lot more things to be done, so even though a lot has been done, there's a lot more that needs to be done. Um, this was done for the competition, but short duration, just uh, me and my wife supporting me. So uh, I think people are a lot happy with what we have done, let's say like this. Excellent, excellent. good stuff. Uh, now, now, some time to inspire people. Uh, what do you think is a uh, is a learning path for a BA specialist? And what kind of roles are there, and how to reach from say point A to point B in that case? Right. So uh, let me stop sharing now. So yeah, yeah. So, that yeah. Could, uh, yeah. so now it's stop sharing, right? Yeah, I can see you now. Okay. Um, in terms of learning path, I would say uh, the path. But I went through 
and a lot of others are going through that is to join a team in a junior position initially mm-hmm. uh, as a retail developer as a report developer data modeler or uh, in the testing in the bi teams in one of those positions and then to uh, change the role in different projects experience with different projects different domains experience with different tools so you start with uh, for example you start as a retail developer and then you work as a retail developer then you work in another retail tool mm-hmm. uh, another domain so this would give you the experience that is required uh, work as in different roles as well and what kind of job roles are there i mean i understand there is a uh, few of them are on the data architecture side few of them are on the visual what are the different job roles in the bi space Yes. Uh, last year, uh, almost around the same time, I did an analysis of the job market of BI and also created a report. It's on it's on uh, reportpr.com. And in this, you will notice that there are over. I, I picked up, I think, three hundred and three hundred and thirty or some odd jobs, mm-hmm. and there were over two hundred and fifty job titles. Wow. <laughs> so. In the industry, it's not so uh, standardized. The job titles are not so standardized. There are so many different titles. In, in general, you have you can think this way. There's a backend, there's a database, there's the uh, front end, front end. Hmm. So there are these ETL uh, developer jobs who bring the data from different data sources. into the central data warehouse mm. the data warehouse itself needs to be designed and uh, modeled and so on architected so there is a architect's role there and the other side on the front end there is this visualization that need needs to be created reports needs to be created mm. so then there is the um, reporting and analytics uh, platform developers and so on so in, and uh, business analysts are required to gather requirements uh testers are required quality engineers are required so this is the kind of roles that are there mm-hmm. and uh, and what advice would you like to give to people who want to enter the bi space i mean somebody who's just graduated or um, just started a job what what would be your advice uh, i would say uh, as i said uh, previously to join a team in a junior position to learn from uh, seniors this is the best ex- exposure that we can get and i think there are also uh, courses and so on but i'm not sure how useful these are in terms of uh, knowledge because this is more practical mm-hmm. if you do it and um, the I think one of the institute that provides good courses is uh, TDWL, the Data Warehouse Institute. They have some go- really good courses. T- TD, uh, TDWL dot com. TD, TDWI. TDWI, okay. Yeah, and they have some good certifications, and uh, they have some good courses. So one of the uh, reputed uh, players in the uh, business intelligence certification. So mm-hmm. th- this is something that I would uh, recommend. Mm-hmm. and uh, it's best to keep updating ourselves with uh, uh, latest tools technologies related to so bi is is not uh, basically bi is a tools and technology agnostic it's a process it's a concept how mm-hmm. you implement it uh, totally depends on the uh, sure and strategy and so so many things are there in that sure, sure. so in, in this case is just to not get uh, not get into like okay I'll use only this tool and this tool and not the other tool you use the tools that are required for the purpose mm-hmm. so anu uh, uh, on a closing note when is your next uh, online conference you're organizing <laughs> uh, and how can how can the viewers of this channel find that out okay right. so the idea is that i do this online conference every quarter or every uh, or twice every year so this was the idea with beacon but it's such a it, it took me over 300 hours of uh, effort mm-hmm. to put that conference uh, the way it went in may uh, to the, uh, there were a lot of people who uh, like speakers uh, coordination of the speakers and so on so they and i don't have that much Time now, 
to um, to spend i have also one back uh, full time at work so till last uh, june i was part time and i had some time to spend on this hopefully i can do this maybe next may so we can say uh, make it a yearly conference and uh, i would really like to make it the online plus offline uh, combined event mm. and which website would they would would they be able to see Yeah, so the details I think would be on publicpr. dot com. Okay. When we do it, alright. There is already a page with the beacon uh, on publicpr. dot com, hmm. and uh, if there are our sponsors who would like me to organize this, because then I don't have to start looking for sponsors. If the sponsors, if there are any sponsors, and if they say that okay, we will sponsor and you can organize the same way you did it last time. Uh, happy to do that. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. Thanks, Anu. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Rishi. And as I said, uh, thanks to you for taking this initiative. And yeah, we we have to reschedule it so many times, but finally, I'm happy that uh, it happened. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, thank you.